What's up, yo? In this video, we are going to be styling all the work we've been doing for the last numerous videos. This is not a mandatory video for the series, because if you're not worrying about styling right now, then eh. But I recommend you go through it just to get some practice. Pretty much right now, it's just a list here with this uh, plain inputs and some buttons that don't even look like buttons. So we're going to try and go off of this that we created earlier on in the series, where we have a nice form with these very clear buttons. That's what we're going to mimic. However, we're going to do it on the customers and it's going to be a little bit different because we're not going to use this pop-up modal. You could certainly design it that way if you wish. However, I'm gonna go with the individual page structure that we've been doing. We're just going to make it look a lot better. So here we are in the customer component. I also have the edit employee component up because I'm gonna be referencing that. If you're just jumping in, you don't have the edit employee component, no big deal. Basically, we're just going to require you to type a little bit more, no problem. So I like to use copy paste whenever possible. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to find our inputs in here and it's kinda easy at lost. So find the inputs and I'm going to surround these with a form. Is this required? No, it's working as is, but I think this is generally recommended when you are submitting data. So when you have a form, you have the ability to give it an ID, which is how you're going to reference it. So we'll just call it customer. And you can make any button submit this form using the form attribute. So scrolling down, we have this button save. So you could say form and set this equal to customer. What this will do is it'll make the enter button automatically submit the form. So we can change our data, hit enter, and it saves. However, you may have noticed a refresh. So that's one of the things with forms is it will submit the page and cause a refresh. You see this question mark in the URL. Well, we can fix this by going into the event handler on click, go to the definition, and this will have the event passed in as a parameter and you can say e.preventDefault. I'll tend to call this E for event. I also use E for error. So you'll see E a lot watching these videos. So now let's try it out. We will just change this and hit enter and it worked. Now you may also notice sometimes a form will have an on submit and you can pass in a function here, which the function is called update customer so we'll say update customer and then other times the button will have an on click so scrolling down you see update customer both get the job done my general preference though is to have it in the form that way all the form functionality is kind of within one location and you don't have to go find some button which may be deeper in your code but optional now everything should work the same way updated data hit enter and it still works so we haven't actually made the form any prettier so everything looks the same but now that we're in a form, we can give these labels and the labels will be used to describe what each input is for. So we'll say label. This one is going to be for the name and I'll do something very similar for the next input. So I'm going to copy this and paste it down here, changing this to industry. Now you don't just wanna leave it like so, you want to associate the label with the input using a for attribute. So that's going to look like this. For, and then you can set the ID that you want to associate it with here. So we'll say name. Then jumping into the input, we'll say ID is name. So uh, make sure those are all capitalized the same. So those are now associated. And that can also be helpful for things like screen readers, bots and form autofill, and just making sure people navigate through your page correctly. So the next one will say label for industry and we will give that ID to this input as well. ID is industry. So now this is what it looks like, name and industry. All right, so we improved the HTML. Now I wanna bring over some classes that we have defined inside of the edit employee. Feel free to just type these out manually. Pretty much just going to copy paste. So here we have the form class name. I'll go ahead and paste that here. Looks good. And you'll notice that each one of these inputs is put inside of a div. So the label's in a div, the input is in a div, and then both of those divs is within another div. Pretty obnoxious, but that's how it's going to position things correctly within these individual divs. So I'm going to copy over that structure. So let's just copy this first outer div. 
or you can type it out yourself. So right before the first label, we will paste the div and I will also close the div. I'm not gonna worry about indentation too much yet because when I save, it'll auto format once we have everything fixed that's uh, syntactically correct. So we end the div and now we're going to have a div for the label right here. That's going to go right here and then close the div after the label right here. And then lastly, a div for the input. So here is that div, paste that there and end it down here. Perfect, save and you can see it reformatted some. We're going to follow that exact same setup for the next input. So I'm going to copy this outer, oh, I hate when it does that. All right, copy that outer div and we will paste that right here. Closing off the div down here. Perfect. And then we will take the div for the label. So that's one right here. Copy that. Paste it right here. And this is one thing that's kind of weird. Maybe you guys could give me the shortcut if you know. Visual Studio Code is smart enough that if I type out, for example, a forward slash or anything, it'll pop up with the ending. But maybe there's a way to do that without having to type some random character. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and copy the input div and we will place that here. So yeah, this is just some obnoxious reformatting of our HTML, but it allows us to apply classes for different visual structure. So that is now our structure. Cool. Visually, this is going to change it such that the label and the input are on the same line as this outer container is using flex and the items are going to be centered within that with a margin bottom six, which will push the next thing down. So it's going to look something like this. And you can adjust however you feel necessary to get things to look right. Maybe we can change this so that it's one fourth and this is three fourths. Let's see what that looks like. So it's going to bring these a little bit closer together. Let's do the same for the name. So we will go up and we will change this to one fourth and this to three fourths. So that's what it's going to look like on small screens or medium screens. If you zoom in, it's going to change because we have flex, so it'll just bring it down to the next line. Now let's style the input to make it look a little prettier. What we'll do is we'll head over to the edit employee, grab the class names for the input, and we will bring that over into our own input. Now we already have a class name here, and I actually forgot to put name so definitely want to fix that there. But as I mentioned previously in this series, the difference between class and class name is not important right now. Class will work as well. You'll just get a warning in the console. Same thing down here. We will change class here to class name. So far, it should be looking better. I'm going to zoom out just a bit. So that's what it's going to look like. The entire form seems a little close to the corner there, so we can add some margin to it. Finding the start of our form, we'll just say margin, or actually M3. I'll scoot it in just a bit. So adding it to the form actually brought this stuff in, but it didn't include the delete, so instead we can add a padding to the outer div. So let's go back into our code, and in this div, we will just say class name and set that equal to P3, and then get rid of margin three here. And now the delete button is scooted in as well. Let's reformat this delete button to look a little better. So we will grab some button classes, scrolling down to the bottom. Here is a button, we'll copy that, and we'll bring it over to our button. So search delete, it's right here. And we will add class name, and then we'll paste in these classes. So now it looks like this. Same thing when we change data, we want the buttons to look nicer and we can surround this button in a div so that it's on its own line. So div, and then put it, close it after the closing tag of the button. And now delete will go down to a new line when these new buttons pop up. Let's go ahead and copy the styling for the other button. The only difference is the color. 
So I'll copy that, and that's what I'm going to use for the save. So let's find that. Here we go. So class name, and set that equal to that. Now when we change the data, it's looking a little bit better. I think we could use the same gray for the cancel, so let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll bring that up to this button here. There we go. All right, this is what it looks like. Now we can just add some spacing. We'll just surround both of these buttons in a div so we can replace this fragment. And then we can give it a class name. So class name, and we will set this equal to margin two, which should space it out a little bit so that if we change something here, it's spaced. But let's just do on the Y axis, or we could even just do the bottom. So M B two. And that will make it so that the delete button is moved down, but we're not being scooted over on the left or on the top. We could do something similar to get space between these two if you want. So let's just add margin right two, and that should do the trick. There we go, looking pretty good. Maybe just change the delete color a little bit, maybe like a red. We could also try a really dark slate and then make the text white. So let's try slate 800. 800. I guess the text is already white, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think we can make this go back look like a button. So we will find that. Here we are. We'll say class name. It's that equal to the same coloring as the purple button. So now it looks sort of like this. Let's change the text to a left arrow like this and get rid of the underline. No underline. So I just looked up left arrow and I'm able to take this and that's what we will use. So paste that there. And now it should look a little bit better. So we'll close out of this and there we go. We change it. This is what it looks like. I want this go back button to be inside of the same spacing as the form, but I don't necessarily want it to be inside of that same div, which is conditionally being rendered if a customer exists. So an alternative here is to create an outer div, and this is going to surround everything, and that's going to have the class name P3. You can get rid of the class name here, and then we'll just make sure we close this div. So it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. There we go. And now these should all be in line, and everything is within the same box here. These are not being sized the same because this is a button and this is a link. So what we could do is we could actually put a button inside of our link. So we'll say button and put the closing after the text. And we'll take all of these classes, cut them and put them on the button itself. This is an alternative to creating an on click and then navigating. We can just surround it in a link. Now they look roughly the same and we should be able to hover over and click the link just the same. So cool. So that'll get you going in the right direction. Obviously it's not perfect, but you can modify as you please to design what you want. Next up, I wanna style these here. You could do it kind of like the employees page, but I think I'm just gonna keep it simple and just have these texts inside of a button looking thing for each one of these. So let's head over to our customers component. So what we can do is instead of returning a list item inside of an unordered list, we're just going to remove the unordered list. And then what we'll do is we will change this list item to a div. And then inside of the link, we are going to create a button. And we should be able to style the button similar to how we have our other link. So we will paste over those attributes, copy these, paste, save. All right, work in progress. So let's just go ahead and give this div class name margin two. And that'll space these out. One last thing I wanna fix is this add customer button is centered in the page. And this comes from inside of the add customer. We have this margin X auto. So we can remove this. That should get rid of the auto margins and put the button over on the left side of the page. Perfect. Not the perfectest of styling, of course. Like I said, I'm not the expert when it comes to this yet, but it should get you 
going in at least the right direction so you can adjust this to fit your needs and style it as you wish. Definitely let me know if you have any suggestions for the styling. Drop a comment below. Stay tuned for the next video and be sure to subscribe.